good evening students hope you all can hear my voice yes sir okay thank you very much it's good number to start today's session so right today we are going to start a workshop on cv writing right so this workshop series basically align with our OUSL BSc career fair, right? Our main aim is to provide good knowledge about CV writing for all of, for all of you. And today we have some one of uh, experienced guest speaker. Yeah, we're delighted to have Ishan Kamil. He's one of industry expert and he's currently working as a talent acquisition specialist at Fortitude. I think Kamil, uh, are you there? I hope Ishan is in the meeting. Ishan Kamil is here to share valuable insights and tips to make your CVs in very standard manner. And thank you for joining with us, Ishan. Let's keep, kick off the session. Uh, I think uh, students, please enhance your CV writing skills together. Participate actively with the session and enjoy the workshop, right? Ishan, over to you. You can continue this session. So hope you, you all can hear, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Hi, Kasun. Hi. Yeah. Over to you, uh, Ishan. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Kasun. So good evening, all. So first, I would like to thank the coordinators uh, of this session, Tatsara from Slascom and Kasun from OUSL for organizing this session and inviting me as a guest to address you all. So I'll give you an introduction about myself first. Uh, my name is Isan Kamil. I am currently serving as the Assistant Manager Talent Acquisition at Fortune. So today I will be taking you all through two areas. Initial area will be into uh, how to build your resume. Or CV and uh, then I'll be taking you all through how to manage a LinkedIn profile so hopefully you will be get uh, you will you all will be able to get something out of this and uh, I'm uh, I think you all can take some uh, key takeaways from this session today Kasun, can I share my screen yes sir. Wait, I have given. Yeah, you can share on the screen right now. Super. Yeah, I have given the permission. You can share. Great. Thanks. Okay. Can you all see my screen? Yes, we can yes. see. Yeah. Super. So let's start with uh, how to build your resume. So hope uh, you all know what is a resume and how to, you, you, you all might have already prepared a CV uh, for your job search or the career day you all having a head. So I'll walk, walk you all through how you all should build, re, build re, resume, what should be there, what should not be there. So this, this is the agenda today. So what is a CV and what is the difference between a CV and a resume? And what are the details should be consistent in a resume and personal information, working experience, educational qualifications, etc. So this is pretty self-explanatory. So earlier in those, like earlier we used to call it's, it as a CV, but current in current context, we used to call it as a resume. So these are the differences of a CV and a resume. So usually CV will come up with like 
two or three pages there will be lot of information given uh, about yourself in the cv uh, for example you can see here uh, cv is a detailed version but resume will be a brief version so cvs will be consist of two to three pages but uh, a resume will consist of only one page where only the key elements will be mentioned there so basically resume is a competency based document where you have to provide only the relevant and key informations uh, for the recruiters or for the hiring managers to review your cv so for for example if i say you like a recruiter will uh, how long do you think a recruiter will take to go through a cv a resume have you all got any idea so usually a recruiter or a talent acquisition professional will take around 10 to 15 seconds to go through a cv so they will not go through each and everything mentioned on your cv but what are the key highlights you all you all have mentioned there for example what are the skills specific skills you all skills you all have mentioned there and also what what are the uh, accomplishments or your success stories or else uh, the heading you all have given in the cv so it has to attract uh, a recruiter to for them to get go through your cv or resume so these are the differences of cv and a resume yeah so what is a resume a brief about a person's education qualification and previous occupations so you all can see a template given here as example so this is a perfect resume which will be a suitable resume for you all to present it to a company or a uh, interview at at your career day so you have to this this is a way to present yourself in the outside world so it has to be very short and sweet not two or three pages a person should uh, be able to go go through your resume at once so all the key areas should be mentioned there except putting all the on like uh, all the information too much information into your cv so that's what the the difference has been from cv we have evolved to a resume so currently the trend is to have a resume not a cv so resume is a formal form of a personal marketing which you will highlight only key points of you great so this is an example of the traditional cv and a modern resume hope you all can see the difference there so in a cv uh, i would insist you all to have a good professional uh, picture of yourself with a, preferably preferably with a white background or a blue background will be ideal and also the main informations uh, as you all can see in this uh, modern resume format the contact details and the skills education and the experiences so it, this this kind of a resume will definitely attract the recruiters and the hiring managers to go through and uh, shortlist you for an interview so when it comes to a resume or a cv it is the key for you to get through for an interview so there will be multiple applica applicants will be applying for a job opportunity so for you to get shortlisted for an interview you have to attract uh, from your cv or the resume so it is a key for you to get selected or shortlisted for an interview so you have to make sure you uh, 
exactly uh, give the information relevant to those uh, job descriptions mentioned in the job advert or else if you are uh, for example when in in your career day if you are uh, walking into a company so you should understand the company what kind of a company is that and what are the skill set they are looking for so that will make you to understand what are the skill sets you will have to provide in your cv cool so these are the basic layout of the resume you will have to mention the name professional job title so since you all are fresh graduates you all can mention uh, a graduate or undergraduate uh, down the down the name and uh, a brief introduction about yourself uh, how passionate are you for example if you are a, a finance manager for example has given you what kind of uh, experience you have what kind of uh, challenges you have uh, uh, overcome uh, during your exposure experience so those kind of a small brief about the profession will be ideal there so if if you are if you don't have any working experience uh, don't mind putting kind of a uh, strengths what kind of strengths you all have what kind of skill set you have uh, to mention as a brief uh, in the resume next to your name and uh, con contact information is definitely important mentioning in a resume and uh, mentioning your educational qualifications so basically i'll explain in my next slide what kind of a how to describe your ed educational qualifications then skills and work experience uh, mentioning references it is optional it is not exactly required but if you like since uh, the cv uh, resume you are making for one page uh, i don't think you will have enough space to mention the referees but you, you can keep it as optional so if a company uh, willing to hire you they will request for the referee details from you so that you can uh, send the details uh, through an email for them cool so personal information on a resume so 50 to 100 words it should not be more than that try to restrict and brief as much as possible so resume should be focused on your work experience uh, and also its objective should be focusing on your aspirations goals skills and educational background so at a at a glance if a person sees your resume uh, he should be able to find what kind of a goal or aspiration you have uh, what kind of a career path uh, you are uh, trying to go into so those kind of a basic idea a person should be able to a recruiter or a hiring manager should be able to uh, get once they go through your resume and uh, you have to definitely mention your email address and contact details and uh, uh, hope uh, all of you all have uh, linkedin profiles uh, and uh, better mentioning the linkedin profile link also in the resume because the current context most of uh, the recruiters in the industry uh, are, will be going through the linkedin profile to understand what kind of a uh, uh skill set you have and also what kind of uh, how uh, attractive is your profile on linkedin and how active you are on linkedin as well so maintaining a linkedin profile is very essential i'll uh, come talk about a linkedin profile in my uh, next slides also yeah cool so when mentioning work experience uh, you have to start uh, with the most recent job you have done and uh, and your way back so don't start off with the first job you have done but start off with the recent job you have done so most of the people uh, fail to do that because uh, when a recruiter or a hiring manager initially will go through your current employment what kind of a, a job you are look, 
uh, doing because it will be uh, the requirement for their current job. So in that case, you have to uh, mention the recent job uh, at start. So uh, in work experience, definitely mention if you all have any working experience, just mention the uh, starting date and the title and the uh, if you all have already designed the end date as well. And uh, the mentioning the key responsibilities you have uh, uh, done in the uh, particular job role, just mean like two or three lines will be sufficient, not needed to mention all the uh, responsibilities or the job role you have done in particular role. So otherwise it will be like too much information in the CV and it will be uh, uh, like you can't manage it within a one page resume. So it will be like two or three uh, pages so that uh, to restrict it, better to brief your job uh, roles or responsibilities you have done in a particular job uh, uh, to one or two uh, lines. So yeah, is the educational qualification how you should uh, mention it in your resume? So mention the degree, uh, what kind of a degree you have followed and the university name definitely has to be mentioned and uh, the study time frame, how long have you uh, done that uh, degree and GPA and the others are optional. So this is the skills and competencies is the main uh, area for you in a resume where a fresh graduate or an undergraduate should focus on because uh, uh, they might not have working experience, but uh, the, the main thing a recruiter or a hiring manager will uh, get attracted uh, in the skills. So you all can mention your soft skills and hard, both hard skills in the CV. Uh, so usually recruiters will go through uh, the soft skills uh, during the, in, uh, like initially if, if you are shortlisted for an interview. So initially a recruiter will uh, reach out to you, then they will uh, be uh, checking your soft skills, what kind of a communication, uh, skills you have, what kind of a uh, teamwork or leadership qualities and skills you have possessed. So those kind of uh, uh, informations will be gathered by the recruiters in the initial uh, phone or a telephonic uh, conversation with you. So make sure you have uh, mentioned the exact and right uh, set of soft skills and uh, hard skills also like for example if you are a technical uh, person so mentioning you for example if you are a software engineer mentioning the languages or the uh, frameworks you have worked on and you have uh, uh, experience in so you have to mention those uh, uh, hard skills definitely in the CV because it will be uh, for example if we are looking for a uh, software engineer with uh, MERN stack experience. So we'll be going through the resume uh, and checking whether they have mentioned the uh, language just as a hard skill uh, in the resume. So make sure you mention the hard skills along with the soft skills uh, in your resume. So these are a few points you have to keep in mind when preparing the resume. Uh, spelling and grammar. Definitely make sure you have uh, the right spelling and grammar in the CV. And alignment and formatting. Some CVs alignments are not uh, correct and formatting uh, different formatting will be there in different areas of the CV. So make sure you have, you have kind of a uh, specific uh, format for the entire CV. And uh, short and simple. The CV should be definitely sh short and simple. As we talked earlier, as I mentioned earlier, 
it should be a resume not a cv so it should be short and simple and uh, quickly a person should be able to go through that rather than uh, like a, a recruit or a hiring manager has to go through if a person has to go through like two or three pages they will not definitely read everything on your cv or resume so definitely it should be short and simple make sure you make it for one page and factual data should be given in the cv and customize it like there are different portals uh, for cv uh, writing and cv designing so you all can use those different online portals there are free portals uh, for you to uh, templates to download and uh, prepare a resume so customize it uh, as per the modern trend and uh, make a attractive cv for a hiring manager and a recruiter to shortlist it for an interview and definitely make sure uh, every time you have for example if you have a, a educational qualification uh, completed and if you are undergraduate and you have graduated make sure you have update the cv uh, like mention that you are you are a graduate and also when you have uh, resigned from a job and you have joined another uh, company just make sure you update uh, the cv and uh, if for example like as i told you definitely most of these recruiters will be going through your linkedin profiles as well and if there is a, a discrepancy between your linkedin profile and uh, the resume it will be not uh, attract it will not get attracted for them so in that case better if you all can update the cv frequently if there is any updates to be done great uh, so this is all about cv writing so you all have you all got any questions you all can shoot out No questions? Yeah, so yeah, so there are a few questions coming on in the chat. How can we add our projects to the CV? Yes, so like uh, with the work, if you all don't have any work experience, definitely uh, you all can mention the projects uh in uh, without mentioning the uh, work experience and if you all have uh, uh, work experience along with the projects make sure you all uh, have both uh, under like for example initially put the uh, experience and down the experience you just mention your projects but don't give too much of information there just give a brief about that for example if you all have done a uh, software project so just mention the project name and what are the technologies you all have used for that uh, uh, or the skill set you all have used for that particular project so don't uh, make it like more complex and don't provide more information too much information there so in that case like uh, to shorten the cv to make it as one page uh, you all can eliminate the job uh, if you all have working experience you all can also eliminate the uh, job roles and responsibilities uh, in the experience like you all can only mention the relevant uh, job title and the uh, company name and the start date and end date so you all can explain your job roles and responsibilities uh, during the interview hope uh, i answered that question and the second one is it projects and certificates in this year yeah so same uh, kind of a question projects and certificates in resume yeah you all uh, better if you all can like uh, if you all are into tech uh, technical skills you all definitely have to mention these projects and uh, yes certificates along with your uh, educational qualification you all can mention the uh, certificates uh, in the resume yeah So yeah, intern job CV definitely it's 
uh, as i told previously you all can mention your skill sets and the projects you all done during your university uh, so uh, does it need to mention the work experience there but make sure you are you make in a good uh, attractive format uh, with a with a uh, picture photograph uh, and make sure you mention the projects uh, along with the technical skills you all uh, have gained during those projects what are the requirements for referees yeah so uh, referees are like basically if a person has working experience uh, relevant recruiters will look for referees who have uh, who are is or her co-workers uh, with whom they have worked so better if you have a work working experience mentioning your co-workers as referees but as i told you don't mention in the resume uh, keep like you can mention down the resume as uh, referees uh, on request here so you all can uh, uh, provide the referee details if a uh, if you are shortlisted and selected for an uh, for an opportunity otherwise no need to mention the referee details there and uh, if you are a, a graduate or undergraduate just mention your uh, university lecturers or someone as referees so uh, cv for an internship i hope i have, I have already answered that question do we have to include a whole and yeah so o level and a level results uh, you all uh, can just provide you have just provide the information in, in educational qualifications that you have completed advanced levels and the year you have completed and the ordinary level the year you have completed uh, should not put all the results over there so it will be like uh, too much information in the cv and you all can't manage Uh, in one page so no need to mention all the uh, results over there is it good to add work experience which is not related to the job now uh, that depends because uh, uh, working experience like if you are applying for a particular job and you don't have uh, the relevant working experience uh, but mentioning your working experience will be a plus for you because uh, the relevant uh, hiring manager will go uh, do the interview and they might they might uh, uh, get an idea that you have working experience and you uh, they will get an idea that you have worked with teams and you know corporate environment how it works so the, in that case if the working experience is not related to the job role you are applying for even that mentioning uh, the work experience won't be won't do any harm if the current job is not related to the job we are applying still we have to put it up in top yes so as i told for the previous question also definitely mentioning your work experience will be a plus uh, even if you are not applying uh, for a, a similar role but uh, it will be a ideal uh, scenario where the hiring manager or the recruiter will understand that you have got a kind of a corporate exposure and teamwork ex experience uh, with that so how many projects should we add like don't uh, like if you all have done 10 uh, 15 projects don't mention everything there just make sure you mention uh, two or three main projects you all have done and uh, if you are a experienced person if you are applying for a job just go through the job advertisement thoroughly and understand what kind of a skill set the uh, advert has mentioned they require so in that case based on that uh, make sure you put the prioritize the projects you have done and uh, make sure you mention the relevant skill sets uh, in your resume
if we have another file I'm not clear on that question. If you have another field experience, yeah. So yeah, similar question. I think I've already already answered for that. How far is a cover letter important? Should be, yeah. Good question. Cover letter. So cover letter is not really important. I would say because no one like uh, most of the recruiters uh, are busy looking at uh, hundreds of CVs. So I don't think uh, recruiters will have time to go through a cover letter. But just uh, in the email body, when you are sending the CV for a, applying for a particular position, just make sure, just give a brief about uh, you. For example, if you are a graduate or undergraduate, just mention you are a graduate or undergraduate at, at this particular university. And you are looking uh, to contribute to the organization uh, as a as put your skills and uh, just give a brief description. Don't uh, uh, mention like a big uh, cover letter is not needed there. Yeah, this is also ideal, like uh, giving the JIC account instead of uh, providing uh, all the projects that would be ideal, but uh, based on the job requirement, a better mentioning like two or three key projects would be also ideal because then the uh, recruiters or the hiring managers will understand your specific skill sets and the uh, areas you are expertise, expertise on. Is there any particular colors we should omit? Yeah, so make sure you just uh, have a cool color, not like dark colors on your CV. Make sure it is mostly uh, it is like visible like i would prefer uh, a cv with white background or a light blue blue background rather having a white sorry a dark colors there can you brief idea about portfolio than better yeah so portfolio yeah you can have a different document uh, for a portfolio uh, as a software engineering students yeah you all should have a portfolio but better uh, sending it as a different document you can attach along with your cv if you are sending uh, applying for a job opportunity so have a kind of a two or three page uh, portfolio uh, which you, are, you all can present uh, during your career day or a, or a, all, also you all can attach uh, in an email along with your CV. Yes, so yeah, so I am currently working for a software related company and not resigned yet. So is it okay to put the job experience in the CV? Yes, definitely you can uh, mention your experience. Exp mentioning the experience will be definitely a key uh, plus for you uh, since they will understand that you have some kind of a working experience and uh, explaining your strengths will be a plus there. So can you tell us why most of the CVs get rejected? So there are, like for example, uh, there are different aspects I would say. Uh, to, for a CV to get rejected, uh, it is basically uh, due to the job requirement and the hiring manager's requirement. For example, if there is a software engineer opportunity, uh, a particular organization will be using the relevant uh, languages or the tech stacks. So if you doesn't have the relevant experience, they might can uh, they might not shortlist your CV. So that doesn't mean that you are rejected, but you all you might get a opportunity in another organization where your relevant skill set or the uh, experience is matching. So in that case, uh, uh, the CV is not getting rejected because of anything else, but also like providing too much of information uh, should be eliminated in the 
CV because don't uh, the hiring managers and recruiters will not have much time to uh, go through the C uh, each and every CV like if it is like two or three pages. So make sure with that one page CV you utilize the uh, most and put the relevant skill sets and uh, relevant working experiences there. Thus, GPI and university name strongly considered by shortlisting. Uh, not really, but uh, basically uh, the GPA and university names are not really considered while shortlisting, but uh, uh, definitely based on your skill set and working experience. Uh, that's how we do, but uh, I am not. Uh, I don't have an idea about other recruiters. Uh, how they do but usually in most of the companies I think uh, definitely GP and university uh, name is not considered uh, shortlist, uh, short in shortlisting if the relevant skill set and working experience is there what kind of non-related skills and achievements we should add uh, that's right so no need to mention the non-related skills. You all have to mention the soft skills. For example, if you all have good communication skills, just mention communication skills and then uh, teamwork and different kind of skill, uh, soft skills which you all have gained uh, throughout your university period and throughout your working experience. And uh, also the hard skills and achievements uh, just mention two or three key achievements you all have uh, gained during your university period or during your working experience. Yeah, so uh, if we don't have any working experience, how we have to add the job title? Yeah, as I told uh, during uh, when I was pre presenting the slides, no need to mention a job title if you don't have working experience. Just mention as a graduate of the particular field. For example, if you are a graduate of software engineering, just mention uh, the title as graduate uh, in software engineering. So that would be ideal. Or an uh, undergraduate. Cool. So if we, uh, if we are very new to LinkedIn and GitHub, there is not enough activeness. What to do? Will it be a huge problem? Uh, no. So for freshers, I don't think it will be a big problem. Uh, so they all can they can update uh, it frequently when they uh, like have new projects completed and also on LinkedIn if when they uh, like uh, have gained uh, relevant experience, they can update those. But uh, I prefer. Definitely being active on LinkedIn and GitHub is definitely a plus. Uh, but uh, like updating the relevant uh, LinkedIn or GitHub profiles based on your projects or working experiences, definitely a plus for you all uh, to got, get, through, uh, get through for an interview, uh, to get shortlisted for an interview actually. So hope I have covered all the answer questions here. So there is one more question, sir. How will recruiters evaluate our LinkedIn profile? Some recruiters previously gone through my LinkedIn profile, but I didn't receive any opportunities yet. But I need to change. So yeah, so they are. I would say if you have good working experience. Uh, mention there and definitely mention the uh, three or four uh, skill sets. I'll be anyway uh, talking about LinkedIn in my uh, other slides. Yeah. If we have uh, work experience on uh, other fields, can we add those experience in our intern CV? Yes, definitely. You can, uh, as I told uh, for previous questions also, definitely you can add those working experience. Uh, that will be a plus for your CV. Okay.
so i'll be uh, now taking you all through how to manage a linkedin profile So hope you all can see my screen again. Kasim? We can see. It's great. So much. Yeah, so I'll be taking you all through how to manage a LinkedIn profile. And uh, here, here is the agenda. What is LinkedIn? What are the main features on of LinkedIn? And a uh, bit about LinkedIn in Sri Lanka and LinkedIn etiquettes. And how your profile should showcase in a LinkedIn to be an all-star profile. So LinkedIn is a social network, as you all know. So I'm sure everyone uh, you know so what is LinkedIn. And uh, so some people, they think uh, LinkedIn is like Facebook, actually not. It's a professional social network. So where you can connect, share, and learn different things from different individuals in the industry and different uh, uh, following and connecting with uh, different uh, individuals in the uh, country where you can get uh, their knowledge and share your knowledge with different uh, stakeholders and also you all can learn a lot on linkedin so there are linkedin courses and there are the people will share their experiences and job opportunities on linkedin so definitely every every individual should have a complete linkedin profile uh, which will definitely help you all to connect with uh, different opportunities and uh, you, you all can uh, showcase your profile on LinkedIn also like if there is a strong profile on LinkedIn there uh, there will be a flow of opportunities for uh, individuals when they are getting the working experience in a relevant industry so these are the main features of LinkedIn so in home home page you all can find uh, different feeds uh, recent posts from your connections. So make sure you all uh, have more connections on LinkedIn and build your network there. So definitely you all can, uh, in your interested areas, you all can uh, get, you all can identify the relevant uh, individuals in different uh, leading organizations in the country and get connected with them, uh, follow their posts and uh, you all can gain knowledge and you all can learn different things from their posts. And also, it will be a plus for you to grow your network uh, along in LinkedIn. And you all can uh, get jobs. You all can see jobs posted on LinkedIn. And uh, your profile will be there. And you all can uh, message and get connected with uh, different recruiters or uh, different industry professionals and uh, network and the interest you all can have different interest areas so that uh, uh, you will be get not getting notifications in relevant company pages and groups uh, where you, you all can enhance your knowledge and skills So this is a bit about LinkedIn in Sri Lanka. So you all can, this is pretty self-explanatory. You all can just uh, go through this. So you all can uh, uh, sort the companies by industry and you all can sort uh, uh, the individuals from universities and uh, you all can sort the jobs uh, by employers. 
uh, on LinkedIn. So I'm pretty sure you all uh, might know this stuff on LinkedIn. Yeah, so let's talk about LinkedIn etiquettes. So as I told in my uh, previously also, like keep your profiles updated like your resume. Uh, make sure you keep your profiles updated with most recent uh, projects or the working experience you all have and your uh, educational qualifications. And uh, make sure you all always keep it professional. As I told you, keep a professional uh, picture there, not kind of a selfie or uh, kind of an image there. A professional uh, image should be there in LinkedIn and uh, make sure you turn off the notification tab when you are editing your profile otherwise it will be uh, popping up for your network that you are updating your profile so in that case just turn off notifications while you are updating or editing your profile and uh, if there are any requirements for you to reach out to your networks or your connections, you can uh, message them. And uh, if someone messages you on LinkedIn, just make sure you, you respond to them promptly. So these are the LinkedIn et etiquettes you all have to keep in mind uh, when using LinkedIn. Yeah, so what is an all-star profile on LinkedIn? So these are the few tips to make sure your uh, profile is all-star profile on LinkedIn. So definitely, as I told you, put a pro professional profile photo there. And uh, the working experience <clears throat> with the positions with a short description about the job role. <clears throat> and for your more skills, you all have uh, hard skills and soft skills. Uh, you, you all do possess. So mention those skills as well there. And a summary about yourself. Uh, like in resume, you just give a summary uh, in a LinkedIn profile as well. And uh, filling out your industry. That is also a plus uh, to identify your profile for, uh, it will be a plus for the uh, profile where the when uh, a particular recruit or a talent acquisition specialist uh, when they are sorting the CV uh, the the profiles on LinkedIn it will be they might uh, sort it uh, relevant for the industry so in that case mentioning the uh, industry uh, in your profile will be also a plus and adding uh, your school and uh, make sure you are you all uh, increase the number of connections on LinkedIn and uh, make a network so that you all can uh, get in touch with different uh, uh, individuals and different uh, professionals in the industry and uh, get engaged with them, read their posts uh, and follow some companies, read their posts so that uh, you all can gain knowledge and see what is happening in the industry and what are the uh, great companies to work for. What are the uh, best companies in the country uh, or the industry to work for? So you all get uh, different ideas uh, when you all go through the news feeds and the uh, company pages and you all when you all follow different uh, high professionals on LinkedIn. Cool. So that's about uh, managing LinkedIn profile. Uh, any questions there? So yeah, there's a question. Uh, if we have working it, working more than one field, what should we do? Yeah, so based on the job uh, requirement, uh, you all can either eliminate the job experience you all have uh, 
uh, gained uh, in different field but if you all don't have much working experience for example if you have only done one or two jobs better mention uh, the experience you have gained in different field also uh, otherwise uh, the hiring manager or the recruiter will think that you don't have any corporate exposure because getting uh, a fresher for a organization and getting a experienced person for an organization is two different things because a person who has working experience will know about corporate culture what kind uh, how a company works and he will know how to manage the stakeholders within the organization so in that case uh, like how to work with a team team so those kind of uh, experience uh, a work a person who has worked will definitely should have gained so that will be a plus in your cv even if you don't have the relevant uh, field experience mentioning that if if you don't have like uh, much working experience like if you have if you have worked for four five companies uh, but mentioning the relevant experience for as per the job requirement would be ideal if you don't have much uh, work experience like you have, if you have worked only for one or two companies uh, no mind uh, mentioning those uh, experience also there Yeah, hope you all can hear me. Uh, so I also want to give you all some tips for the interview. Like you all, I heard that you all are having a career uh, for your career day on uh, in December, right? So for that, uh, if you are going, like there will be uh, many companies representing in career fair. So you all will be walking to those companies and submitting your resume and talking to them, right? So before... Uh, for example, if you are going for a company uh, to have an have a chat with them to have an interview with them, just make sure before you walk into that particular company stall, uh, just Google the company and uh, go through their website and understand uh, what kind of a company is that, what they do. So that will uh, be a plus when you face. Uh, them and if they ask a question what do you know about uh, fortune for example our company if you uh, if if i was the, i am i am interviewing you i might ask what do you know about uh, fortune so if you all can give a brief what kind of company and uh, what you know about the company will be definitely a plus and uh, i would insist you all to uh, do a background research about the company before you walk into their particular stall Uh, and there is a question and if I am working for my own establishment with different field, do I need to include it or not? Uh, that depends. Uh, if you would like to mention that, you can uh, mention, but uh, that is not uh, like uh, required, like if you are working for your own establishment. Mm -hmm. Some students are getting shortlisted without getting an interview. Is that possible? Some students are getting shortlisted without getting an interview. I'm not uh, clear on your question, Kavisha. Some students are getting shortlisted without getting an interview. So usually, how the process works is like when you uh, share a CV, uh, a particular recruiter will go through your CV and shortlist for an interview. So 
basically recruiters will give you a call uh, uh, if 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 it is in a career day they will have a face to face chat and understand your soft skills and all uh, whether your soft skills matching the job requirement and also the company's uh, culture then they will be short uh, shortlisting you for an interview with uh, relevant hiring managers that's what they do so like without getting an like definitely uh, there will be a interview process in all the companies i think when we are calling for interviews so usually definitely uh, everyone will go through the resume first then shortlist and go ahead with the interview process that's how uh, all the companies usually do i hope i answered the question of kavish and kaushika virkon one of my friends got their internship without facing for a face to face interview or online interview uh, that of course uh, i don't have any answer for that but maybe uh, that is from their one of their connections or uh, known person uh, but uh, if uh, usually what we do is we uh, when we hire interns we used to go hire through uh, career fairs and all so recently also we hired few interns through a career fair so we do we go there to an interview initially understand who are matching understand the candidates who are matching our requirements and will be sending those cvs to the relevant hiring manager and they will do an interview and select them so that's how the process works at most of the companies i think so if you have your friend has got an internship definitely uh, through a uh, is a contact i would say what kind of questions will be mainly asking in an interview good good question uh, so usually uh, interviewers if you don't have any working experience they will uh, ask uh, in the initial interviews like in a career fair uh, mostly the recruiters will be there so recruiters will ask about what kind of challenges you have faced during your university or school or if you have working experience in those what kind of challenges you have faced what kind of strengths you all have and weaknesses how you all are managing to uh, overcome your weaknesses so those kind of uh, basic questions will be there and if you all have working experience relevant to the job uh, requirement they will uh, ask about the uh, job role you all have performed what kind of uh, skill sets you all have used what kind of technologies you all have used for uh, during your experience and uh, also how good you all uh working in a team and what kind of a company culture you all would like to work for so those are the questions main questions uh, will be asked during uh, an interview in a career fair cool i don't see any other questions kasun hope we can wrap up Uh, yeah, one question is there, Ishan. Uh, yeah. One student is asking about uh, what about online course certificates? Are they not? Uh, can we upload that uh, online certificate details to the CVs? Uh, one direct message message is there. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, well, what do you I ask? can't see uh, that question. Is it here? No, no. Can I see that message directly sent to me? That's why you can't see. Okay. Uh, can. can you read that message again yeah what about the online course certificates uh, can we upload those kind of certificates to the receiver yeah so yeah so in your educational qualifications uh, online uh, certifications you all have gained if it is relevant to uh, the job you are applying uh, definitely mentioning that won't do any harm uh, but if that is a, a basic course for example if it is a A certification in uh, uh, some people have Microsoft uh, 
uh, Word or Excel, those kind of uh, basic uh, certification uh, mentioning there won't do much of a, a difference. But if you all have good technical certifications uh, or the uh, certifications related to the job role or the job requirement mentioning they are uh, under your educational qualifications or certifications uh, won't do any harm but uh, don't make it uh, like uh, many uh, don't mention all the certifications you have but choose the best ones uh, as per the requirement uh, sir do we have to wear business interview attire for the career fair interviews yes definitely so you all should uh, uh, for have uh, wear formal uh, attire for the career fair interviews also like uh, uh, in other interviews and also another tip i can give you all most of uh, the companies in current context are conducting virtual interviews in that case uh, uh, when you are uh, facing a virtual or online interview make sure you are uh, in a noise free zone and make sure your connection is stable and uh, before before joining the interview you make sure uh, you have a good lighting and uh, uh, in a calm and peaceful environment, uh, uh, make sure you are they are in a uh, calm and peaceful environment. And also, when you are facing the interview, also make sure uh, there is no any background noises or anything. And also, uh, if you, if you are a boy, make sure you uh, wear a good uh, t-shirt is also fine. But wear uh, a t-shirt with a collar, collar, so that will be also a plus. Uh, during a uh, uh, virtual online interview. Uh, there is another question. Do we need copies of the resume for each companies when coming to the career fair? Uh, that, of course, needed, I think, because uh, uh, people won't have a CV, right? Uh, uh, like, if you all have not shared with them uh, a soft copy, they don't have your CV with them, right? So basically, they will go through your CV uh, and uh, make notes. So better if you all can take a few copies and go uh, for each of the companies, you all go. Okay, so I hope I have answered all the questions. Kasun, anything? Yes. Uh, one question is there in the chat. Let's show this one. Right. No. Right, okay. Thank you very much. It's a really interesting session. No and I really appreciate your effort. And uh, you have shared a very good thoughts and experience with our students, right? And. Uh, so one thing I suppose uh, our students learn something about uh, their CV writing skills and they, they can brush up their CVs. So yes, we are giving some time to upload their CVs in coming week and then we will shortlist their CVs with the companies. So uh, thank you very, very much for coming awesome. again. And especially I wanted to uh, yes. thank, and I take this opportunity to thank uh, you and especially Slascom team, Satsara and Dhammika. Uh, behalf of the CITES uh, Open University BSc program and academic panel. And thank you the participants as well. And one special announcement, students, uh, uh, please check your LMS announcements. We will post some updated information, in the LMS messages, announcement section. We are giving some uh, small time duration to upload your CVs and then you can upload your CVs to the LMS, right? We we'll provide uh, this uh, video recording as well. Then you can refer again and again and brush up your CVs and upload your CVs. We'll meet again uh, in future in other session. Thanks, Kasun. Thanks, all. Okay, thank you Wishing very much. You all, all the best for your career day, and hope you all will you all have got something out of the session today, and hopefully you all will be able to get a good opportunity uh, as per your. Uh, desire. Thanks. Okay, thank Thanks you very much. Okay, good night. Okay, bye. bye.